Welcome to The Pursuit, a podcast produced by the Junior Board of the Midwest Chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, otherwise known as NATIS. We are a group of emerging media professionals seeking insights from the leaders in our fields. I'm Arden Curhays, a musician and social media coordinator, and I'll be hosting this episode. Today we'll get to hear from Sam Alex. Sam is a radio and television personality and producer, and is the creator, executive producer, and host of the nationally syndicated radio program, The Sam Alex Show, which is the ultimate on-air backstage pass to Nashville's biggest stars. He is also the founder and director of Camp Broadcast, a workshop for aspiring hosts, which you'll hear more about in this episode. This episode was recorded back in May, but I encourage you to keep an eye out for Camp Broadcast openings early next year. Let's learn more about Sam's pursuit. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited to have you on the podcast. Um, Thanks for having me, Arden. I really appreciate it. Yes, of course. So first of all, we kind of start out asking everybody, you know, like what was the moment that you knew that this was what you wanted to do? Um, So I guess I'll kind of rephrase that a little bit um, because I know that you do a lot with radio and TV. Um, Was there like a moment that kind of sparked your interest in that first, maybe before you even knew that, it was kind of an option. Yeah, I guess I was always the MC for the talent shows in elementary school. And whenever there was a microphone, I would kind of gravitate towards it. Um, so our junior year of high school, the musical was Grease. And the only non-singing role was the DJ, Vince, <laughs> the main brain, Vince Fontaine. So uh, that's the role I auditioned for and got it. I remember the first day doing the dress rehearsal. I'm talking in the mic and then everyone is just stopping and looking at me and smiling. I'm like, huh, there's a correlation talking to the mic and bringing joy to people's lives so that's when it like really hit me and then my senior year of high school instead of wrestling in the winter months I joined the speech team where I competed in the radio speaking okay. like first place in a bunch of the tournaments and I was the the MC for the assemblies all of senior year of high school but it was really that junior year of high school that being the DJ in Greece where I really like hit the ground running that's awesome I love that so much uh, so can you give me a quick kind of rundown of your career so far? Yeah, so I grew up in Chicago suburbs and senior year of high school, I started interning at 93.9 The Light, WLI okay. Christmas station. Um, and I remember I applied to like 40 or 50 different TV or radio stations, like every place with a signal in a two hour radius of Chicago. And they all said the same thing. Uh, you have to be a junior, senior in college and you must be receiving credits. I was only senior in high school. But I remember reading the bio of all these people I really admired, and they were like 16 working at the station. Like, they found a way somehow. So I was able to take an independent study class at Harper Community College, and where I was able to get credit that way. And finally, after like 40 no's, one station said, yes, Sam, we will accept you as an intern. Um, so then I did that senior go- uh, summer going into my freshman year of college, Illinois State, where I just originally majored in education. It was always a backup plan, but I just lived and breathed at the local stations, 96.7 IROC and and B104. And I just took out the trash, filled in for the receptionists, and then just set up all the remotes for the broadcast, working weekends, holidays, doing anything I could to just um, get on the air, learn about radio and and media and so on. So it's like for four years, I just felt like for 60 hours a week, I was at these local stations. And then right when I graduated, I was fortunate enough to get a full-time job, Bloomington, Indiana. So I hosted the morning show there for several years and assistant program director at, uh, so, you know, B96, 103.5, KISS FM, C- uh, CHR, top 40 station in Chicago. So the, the top 40 station of Bloomington, Indiana, B97. So I was the morning show host there for many years. Uh, and then Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, executive producing mornings and being on air. And then in Nashville, Tennessee for seven years, hosting a nationally syndicated country music radio show, which I'm still hosting, but now for my hometown in Chicago. I still go to Nashville all the time for um, red carpets and other events. Um, So I'm hosting the Sam Alex show. It's on Monday to Friday, seven to midnight on amazing country radio stations nationwide. I'm also a correspondent for the past several years for an entertainment news magazine show called Celebrity Page TV, which covers celebrity and entertainment news. (laughs) I really focus on the music and country aspect um, of that. And, and really in a positive spin. So that's on WCIU, the U, every Saturday here in Chicago, as well as the Reels Cable Channel, ABC in New York, and Elena, over 200 local stations across the country. And my big passion project 
is uh, Camp Broadcast, which is a master class I host every June in person for high school or college students that I guess want to do what I do, or maybe start their own podcast or YouTube channel. So yeah, um, I was going to ask about that because um, I know that's how we originally connected. Yeah, well, I, mean, I started it in general two years ago when COVID happened. And because okay. of COVID, in-person internships were canceled, in-person summer camps for kids and job opportunities for high school mm-hmm. or college students, like to be a counselor or work at the camp, that was all canceled. Like my heart was broken because I knew I wouldn't be where I am in life without all those internship and, and job uh, and summer camp opportunities. That's why I created Camp Broadcast in the first place. Two years ago, we were just on Zoom, 10 one-week sessions where every day the students get to, the cool part is they get to interview every day a celebrity. So the cool thing is the campers interview these celebs and then record them on their end and make a hosting reel, that one to two, three minute demo reel that's just beyond invaluable. Imagine you're applying for an internship and on your reel, you're talking to Scotty McCrary, whatever American Idol. So it's, and then also people like me that work in the business to mentor uh, these students. And the best part is campers becoming friends uh, with each other and telling each other job opportunities and so on. So, um, so that's why I created Camp Broadcast in general. And then I brought it to Chicago, my hometown last year, because, hey, my kids are two and four. You only live once and you can't be being by family. So I get to do both things, be by, raise my kids by family and have my dream job hosting my radio show every night and my passion project in my hometown um, every June. Uh, and we're doing it at the Art Center Highland Park. June 13th to 16th. That's where Camp Broadcast is happening. So uh, I, I did see on, I was, I was scrolling through the website and I saw that you had Cassidy Pope on there. I was like, yo, that's so cool. I, I love her a lot. She's great. Um, yeah, she, she's been on my radio show so many times over the years. And yes, next time she's on my show, I'll, I'll let you know, and maybe you guys can play a song together. Absolutely. And you were on Nashville. Yeah. Yes. And on, on when it was on ABC TV. Uh, yeah. In the big episode, it was me, Kesha, and Derek Huff from Dancing with the Stars. And then my scene, playing myself on the red carpet, actually interviewing uh, Hayden Panettiere's character, Juliet Barnes, a very hard hitting questions such as, what are you wearing? Or <laughs> who are you dating? So long story short, the very next day, ABC canceled the show Nashville. But then after that CMT, Country Music Television, picked up the show Nashville to have it air um, a few more seasons. And, and big thank you to Lionsgate and ABC. They had a real trailer for me. and. The catering was through the roof. And I remember one time they had to put a piece of tape down, like for where I was supposed to stand on the red carpet. And then uh, the, the director pointed to where the piece of tape should be. And five people like sprinted for their tape on the back of their chain on their belt for that little piece of tape. So I'm not saying they were overstaffed, but uh, <laughs> so cool. So was that, I don't want to, I don't want to pit any of your experiences against each other, but was that like the coolest one that you've kind of had as a result of all of this? Or is there anything else that stands out? There's so many. I mean, interviewing Barack, Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton. I just like, I've interviewed thousands of people. Uh, I mean, it might have to be uh, Brian and Nick and Howie D, just all the Backstreet Boys and Brian and Tyler from Florida Georgia Line. I interviewed all of them at the same time. Arden, imagine interviewing seven people at the same time. I don't know that I want to, but. uh... (laughs) So yeah, up to that point, I was in the business 15 years where, yeah, I was on the red carpet of the White House Correspondence Dinner. I'd, I've earned it. Like I've right. put, in, put in the 10,000 hours a couple times. Um, so yes, that was definitely one of the highlights. Hey, you were the DJ in Greece. You know, it's going to, it's just, just went up from there. Exactly. Yes. So was there any advice that you got or anyone that kind of helped mentor you a little bit as you were going into this? I guess it was a soft, the, the summer going into my sophomore year of college. I was so concerned and so worried that I was going to be a, a camp counselor potentially for that summer, which meant for those eight weeks, I would be in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin, not interning at a TV or radio station. What am I thinking? So I remember just interviewing or emailing countless people in LA and New York and Chicago and all over for their advice. So, and a lot of them had great advice, such as you only live once, be a kid, be young, be a counselor. Like that internship. You can be- work for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I was a counselor for that summer. That was my last summer ever, but where I wasn't just like going hundred miles an hour. So I'm excited to like go in the woods in the middle of nowhere again and unplug and relax. I try to do that at least like 24 hours, one day a week, like on the weekend. Um, so it's hundreds of people just became mentors over the years um, from that way. And then everyone who was a program director from where I worked um, was a mentor as well. And just 
a lot of times uh, just by observing people, I learned so much of what to do, or maybe even more importantly, what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, anytime someone emails me to, to critique their feedback, I always respond because I remember I was in their shoes and looking for feedback. So this is kind of, I guess that's, this is sort of with every job potentially, but you kind of have to follow sort of the market, right? Like you have to be willing to move and, and kind of go where it is, right? Yes, but there's many of exceptions where, and definitely now with um, so many different media platforms, and there's a thousand different paths to the one destination. So there's no one right or wrong rule. In general, you can't go wrong with starting in a smaller market. I mean, just, I remember someone told me a long time ago too, if they had an opportunity to intern in the White House or intern in a small town mayor office, without a doubt, intern in that mayor office. You're not just getting coffee, you're actually writing the press releases. You're really, you're actually out to the local media for that press conference if you're the press secretary intern for a small town mayor and so on. So there's just so much more hands-on experience. And that's the best way to learn anything. Yeah, I think that's a great point because I mean, you know, the whole White House thing, you're like, yeah, go. That's like a, that's a big deal, you know? But then if you get there and you're not actually doing anything, it's like, yeah, I did this thing, but what did I learn? <laughs> yeah, like I've spoken to many people who've gone to Harvard and they, you know, oftentimes they say it's, they're not learning anything there differently than anywhere else. Right. They're putting themselves in a room with other people who uh, maybe have some connections and so on. So maybe when someone goes to a major market or like the White House, maybe they're not really, maybe they're not as learning as much because they're not as hands-on as they would be in the small town, but that's still a great opportunity someone should do if they get offered it because mm-hmm. you know who else is in that room and the connections and relationships. Um, maybe kind of like with my camp broadcast where it's high school, college students, they're getting to meet one-on-one these program directors, general managers, major morning show hosts, et cetera, to really build a one-on-one relationship rather than just a cold email. Um, so I guess I'm putting people in that room like they are at some of these fancy schools. Um, but the real way to actually learn is to be doing it. So it's creating your own podcast, YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. There's no excuse for someone not to just start doing it right mm-hmm. away on their own. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who are, uh, who are veteran broadcast personalities, and they're glad TikTok, YouTube, podcasting wasn't around then because uh, yeah, maybe the first 10 years, they weren't the most proud of the, the content they're putting out. They're just doing their best. Uh, mm-hmm. So there is something to be said. Yes, it is good for people to be doing their TikTok, YouTube, podcasting right away. But it's okay to just, for some people to just do practice shows, like do the podcast, but maybe not publish it. Um, maybe just send it to people for feedback and so on until they're really ready. So there is pros and cons with that as well. Oh, for sure. Especially with music. It's like nowadays, you, it's so much easier to just release and i don't know that's okay, a whole yeah. other conversation but well there's a saying right there you don't get <laughs> a second chance at a first impression so imagine if uh there's a connection you're able to like play a song for them you want to play a song for them i would think when you're ready mm-hmm. of course yeah like when um artists go tiktok viral but the, and then they're like oh this is my first show ever now that i'm playing like your first show ever how are you I mean, with you the, good? Like, that's scary. That's a lot of pressure for you. Right. There are plenty of exceptions. There's no one right way. Well, yeah. And you're also, I mean, I guess that's with Olivia Rodrigo, too. How then she was on SNL about a year ago and kind of got like thrown into the whole experience of like, yeah, now you have a giant audience. Everyone's going to be judging every single thing that you do. And this is your first time doing it. So you better hope that they're nice about it. <laughs> I know. Maren Morris told me in an interview, she learned from Olivia Rodrigo how to uh, book venues that are smaller than you should be playing in. But it's kind mm-hmm. of, yeah. So basically, what, how cool is that to like sell out venues? And that really creates a buzz for people to say, I don't know how I got a ticket. This is The Pursuit, the weekly podcast produced by the Junior Board of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Chicago Midwest Chapter. I'm John Owens. I'm the Natish Chicago Midwest Chapter President and mark the date, December 3rd, 2022. That's when our chapter will hold its first live in-person Emmy celebration since 2019. The event will be at the Marriott Hotel in downtown Chicago. And our host is Sultan Salahuddin. He's the star of the hit HBO Max comedy, Southside. Tickets are still available. 
Go to our website at chicagoemmyonline.org to purchase them and to get more information. Now, back to the pursuit. All right. We, I think I got us a little off topic there, but um, what advice for, I would say, students and then maybe recent graduates or I guess anyone kind of looking to get into the industry? I know that that's an oddly worded question, but do with that what you will. <laughs> say yes to everything. I mean, I, I remember uh, talking with Claire Shipman. She used to be a correspondent for Good Morning America and ABC News. And uh, and she writes about one, some, one of her books, um, The Power of No. But at that point, she's a 25-year veteran. But when you're in your 20s, like, uh, this is the time right now, early 20s, even up to your early 30s, that is when you should be basically hustling like it is crazy. Just that is the one common denominator bet- um, between, I guess, the people who really make it, whatever their definition of it is, and everyone else, beyond working hard. So to answer your question, saying yes to everything, as long as it's legal and so on. But <laughs> yes, when I was in small town, Illinois, so many people were saying no to setting up the table and handing out coupons at the broadcast on a Friday night. And then again on a Saturday night. And then again on a Sunday morning at the community parade. But I was just saying yes to every opportunity that was being asked to me. And, but even like the cutthroat entertainment business, someone wants to be a stand-up comedian or actor, or musician, um, just outworking everyone else. To answer your question, what's my advice? Hard work, (laughs) show up on time, have a good attitude, and smile. Most people don't do any of those things. But yes, Dave Ryan, iconic morning show host, KDWB, Minneapolis for over 30 years, almost 30 years. The name of his book is Show Up on Time, Have a Good Attitude, and Don't Steal Anything. So if people do those three simple things, good things will happen. Most people don't do those things. Even if they are working hard, they're not showing up on time and it doesn't matter, um, et cetera. Because if someone has to go live at 7 p.m. to host a radio show or to do play-by-play for a broadcast and they're not there and they're late, you're out. Yeah. I I saw something one time and they said that, you know, if you say no to something that nothing's going to happen, but you don't know what's going to happen if you say yes. Like, yeah, it could go wrong, but it could also go right. And I think kind of to your point about, you know, helping set up the table and helping do all of those kind of little, say like not glamorous things that everybody kind of wants to jump up to like, you know, what you do, the whole cool, you get to talk to celebrities and do all those things, but there's so many different steps and skills that you have to be able to learn before you can do that. So you don't crash. And plenty of exceptions, like, um, uh, who I think of uh, Tim Russert, he used to host and uh, meet the press iconic hosts and NBC for many, many years. Um, and his son, uh, Luke Russert wanted to major in journalism, Boston university, very long story short. I remember being in Bloomington, Indiana, where I hosted the morning show. And I, I was there. Oh, wait, when Obama was announced, he was the president and Luke Russert junior in college, I believe at the time was named the national youth correspondent. And I remember on the floor in the corner was the local reporter for NBC Indianapolis affiliate. Her job wasn't to cover Obama being elected. Her job was to cover this Luke Russer, this college student who was covering the election. Um, Long story short, Luke Russer did a great job. He's been congressional correspondent for NBC for a couple of years. And then now what's he doing? He's not in the business anymore. So there might, there's thousands of stories like that where it doesn't mean they're not good people or didn't have talent, but sometimes getting that job too soon before they're paying their dues, um, maybe doesn't work out in the long run. So it's not glamorous at the time. But a lot of times that hard work is really what's necessary. Just think of it as like your graduate school or it's your fellowship. Um, right. As- and then you appreciate it more because you know, you know, you put all the work into actually getting there. Exactly. <laughs> right. So it's good for, yes, not to worry about other people and just do your own thing. And by the way, I would love if people uh, feel free to follow me, look for the blue check mark on all uh, socials. I'm at Sam Alex Radio and at Camp Broadcast for our program June 13th to 16th. We still have a couple spots left if people want to attend that. We'll be downtown Highland Park June 13th to 16th. And our, we have a concert too. So it's our Camp Broadcast Acoustic Jam benefit concert. All proceeds go to scholarships for students to attend camp. So that's Wednesday, June 15th, Joe's Live Rosemont flying in Canaan Smith, 
Daryl Wardley, Abby Anderson, Ray Fulcher, who just wrote four number one Luke Combs songs. I'm going to be in the songwriter acoustic round. So those tickets to joesliverosemond.com. And yeah, the campers get to interview these musicians and all the other celebrities during this week of camp. And then on that Thursday, we're going downtown Chicago to radio and TV stations to get field trips um, to meet with the movers and shakers in person at their offices. So at campbroadcast.com to learn more. That is so great. And major props to you for organizing all of that. That definitely cannot be an easy uh, endeavor. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it reminds me of my friends that kind of organize conferences where they get speakers and panels, you know, mm -hmm. so kind of like that. Plus, I, um, I was the wedding planner for my wedding several years ago. So I, and I've, you know, I've been a producer for media for many, many years. So I just love putting things together and connecting people. You can handle it. Yeah, I think. And thanks for having me on this podcast, Art. I can't wait to see you soon at Better Jester Music Festival. On the yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. I'm, I'm excited. Gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna ask Cassidy Pope if she can come too. <laughs> Do it, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so so much for joining me today and sharing your wisdom with all of us. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you. My pleasure, Arden. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much to Sam Alex for sharing his pursuit with us. Be sure to follow Sam and check out Camp Broadcast on all social media and join us next time on The Pursuit.